the Simplicity Refining System. Welcome and congratulations on your purchase. Since ancient times, mankind has been refining precious metals. Gold, and then more recently, platinum group metals. For centuries, the refining has always been done with highly corrosive acids. Now however, you can refine your gold and platinum group metals, to very high purity, with the simplicity refining process. This process utilizes salt water and electricity, rather than harsh acids to refine the metal. So let's look under the bonnet, and see what we've got. Tank Juicy cell Tank cover Anode cap Anode pouch Scrubber Scrubber cap Cathode cap Cathode Scrubber hose Juicy salt Quadratic precipitant Catalyst Ammonia test liquid Precious metal detection liquid Measuring cup Measuring spoon Pipettes Additional items required, but not supplied with the simplicity, include Battery charger We recommend the Shoemaker SE1250 Battery charger, available through Amazon Hot plate Beaker 2000 ml or larger Alternatively you can use any Pyrex pot made for use on a stove top. Silicone sealant. GE brand is recommended. The simplicity process utilizes electricity, instead of corrosive acids, to dissolve your gold. There are several different ways that you can make electrical contact with your gold. Rings can be strung on a bare silver or titanium wire. This method is commonly used to safely remove stones from jewelry. The Shaw Nickelodeon can be used for this same purpose. The Nickelodeon can also be used for making contact with small pieces of gold that cannot be strung on a wire. Most commonly, gold is first melted and then poured into an ingot mold or onto a flat metal sheet, to form an ingot. A wire can then be soldered onto the ingot to make electrical contact. If you choose to refine gold that is in ingot form, use an 8-gauge, coated, wire. Employ Dix brand solder and flux. Regular lead, or lead tin solder will not stick to the gold. After soldering, Coat the uncoated, exposed portion of the wire with silicone sealant. This will prevent the salt water from dissolving that portion of the wire, and breaking electrical contact. If you choose to string rings on a silver or titanium wire, you will want to do something very similar. Coat the portion of the wire that is not in contact with the rings. If using the Nickelodeon, no coating is required. Once your metal is prepared to be refined, it's time to set up the refining system. Snap the lid onto the tank. Insert the cell. Add to the cell, 1 and 1 quarter cups juicy salt. Add to the tank, 6 cups of juicy salt. Place the anode cap and pouch. Add warm water to the tank, until the water level is approximately equal to the groove in the tank. Add warm water to the cell, until the water level is approximately the same as the water level in the tank. Place the cathode cap, inserting the end of the scrubber hose into the activated charcoal. OK. So now, with everything set up, Let's get to the actual refining. The battery charger has a black wire and clip. 
connect this clip to the black cathode. The battery charger also has a red clip. Connect this clip to the wire from the gold ingot. If using the Nickelodeon to make contact with your metal, clip the red clamp to the top exposed portion of the Nickelodeon's graphite rod. Lastly, if choosing to string rings on a wire, attach the red clip to the end of that wire. Turn on your battery charger by flipping the switch from off to 10 amps. Dip your metal into the salt water. Remove it from the water and then sprinkle a quarter teaspoon of catalyst onto the metal. Dip your metal back into the salt water. The meter needle will immediately jump to around 8 to 10 amps. As metal dissolves into solution, and as the solution warms from the electrical charge, the amps will increase. Typical running amps are about 15, though you may find that your amps are somewhat higher, or somewhat lower. At 15 amps, dissolving time is usually around 1 ounce per hour. After several hours, as the metal completes its dissolution, the amps will rapidly drop to zero, since there is no longer any metal to complete the electrical circuit. Please note, if, instead of refining an ingot or bar of metal, you are either stringing rings on a wire, or using the Nickelodeon, then the amps will never drop to zero. The amps will drop to about four and remain there, because the wire or graphite rod will continue to conduct electricity. Dissolving time will vary with the amps. Typical dissolving time, at 15 amps, is about 1 hour per ounce of metal. So, 5 ounces will usually take about 5 hours to dissolve at 15 amps. Lower amps will increase the dissolving time while higher amps will shrink the dissolving time. High silver content can significantly slow the dissolving process by coating the ingot with a soft white material called silver chloride. The insoluble silver chloride coats the ingot, making it harder for the salt water solution to come in contact with and then dissolve the other metals. High silver content, which is common in 18 carat and 10 carat gold, can be mitigated by making a wide, long, thin ingot. It doesn't matter what your ingot looks like. So you can simply pour your gold onto a steel sheet. Precipitation. When the metal has finished dissolving, it's time to go to the next step. Precipitation. Turn off your battery charger and remove the wire from the GC cell. Remove the anode cap and pouch. Place them in a bucket or large cup. To avoid stains, wear rubber gloves. Remove the cell from the tank. Pour the solution from the cell into a large beaker or a similar Pyrex pot. The cell holds about 2 liters so you will want to use a beaker that holds at least 3 or 4 liters. Return the cell to the tank. Replace the cathode cap and pouch. Add water and then GC salt, in preparation for the next refining cycle. If desired, that cycle can be days, weeks or even months later. In that interval, the water in the cell may turn blue, or green. That color change will not reduce the effectiveness of the solution. Having returned the cell to the tank, you can now precipitate your gold. Add one ounce of quadratic for every ounce of metal that you dissolved. So, for example, if you dissolved five ounces of metal, then add five ounces of quadratic. Heat the solution to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Typically, the gold will complete its precipitation in about 30 to 60 minutes. Before decanting your solution into another container, 
you will test to confirm that no more gold remains dissolved in your salt water. This is done with precious metal test solution. Using the pipette, take a small sample of the solution from your beaker. Don't worry about picking up particles of precipitated gold. They won't show up on the test. The test liquid will only change color in the presence of dissolved, precious metal. Place a few drops of the solution on a spot plate or on a paper towel. Add one or two drops of precious metal test liquid to the sample you just took. If the sample changes color to purple, brown, or black, some gold remains dissolved in solution. In that case, add a little more precipitant and give the gold some more time to precipitate out of solution. Between each test, clean your pipette with water. The inside of the pipette can be cleaned by squeezing and releasing the bulb a few times, while the tip is immersed in water. When your test causes no change in color, that means that no gold remains dissolved in solution, and it is time to recover the precipitated gold. Decant the salt water into a glass or plastic container. Then put the container aside. If you have inadvertently poured off some of the gold particles, they will settle to the bottom of the container, and you can retrieve them later. Rinsing. To obtain high purity gold, rinsing is essential. When you filtered or decanted your solution, you poured off the impurities. However, your gold mud still has some solution clinging to it. And that solution has dissolved impurities in it. If your mud was dried and melted at this point, those impurities would contaminate your gold. So rinsing away those impurities, is essential. For this, you will need water, ammonia, measuring cup, bucket, pipette, ammonia hydroxide test solution. For the first rinse only, ammonia, not water, must be used. The reason is this. If the first rinse is with water, copper hydroxide can precipitate, coating and contaminating the gold with a white, sticky substance. Add at least enough ammonia to cover your gold mud. The ammonia will rapidly turn blue, as it reacts with a small amount of acid that is still clinging to your gold mud. Decant the ammonia, saving the solution. Fill your beaker with water. Tap water is fine. Give the water a good stir, with a clean plastic, or glass stirring rod. The gold particles should settle within a minute, or two. Just be patient, giving the particles whatever time they require, to fully settle to the bottom of the beaker. Once the particles have settled, decant or filter the water, and then rinse again, with water. Two rinses is usually enough, but we'll test to make sure. A small amount of water will cling to your gold mud. We'll take a few drops of that water, and test it for impurities. Tilt your beaker. Water will drip off the mud, and then puddle in the corner of the beaker. Take a sample from the puddled water and place it on a spot plate, mirror, or paper towel. To test. Add a drop of ammonia test liquid. If you see any color change, even the palest shade of blue or purple, rinse again, and then test again. When the ammonia test indicates no color change, it's time to give your mud a final rinse with distilled water. The distilled water will wash away any minerals left behind by your tap water. Add a couple more of distilled water. Give your gold mud some time to settle. Then filter, or decant your water. You can now dry your gold mud, 
either by air drying or heating on a hot plate. Please note, do not put a cold beaker on a hot, hot plate. It will shatter. Melting. So now you have highly refined gold powder, and it looks like, well, it looks like dirt. To restore the beautiful, anisotropic gold color, you will need to melt the powder. Typically, melting is done by torch, so that is the method we will illustrate. Here is what you will need. Melting torch. Use a torch made for this purpose. The common propane torch simply will not provide enough BTUs to do the job. Crucible. You can use a standard clay graphite crucible, a ceramic cup-shaped crucible, or you can use a burner ceramic crucible. Crucible rest. Any refractory material, like a brick or a cinder block for example, will do the job. Flux. Common fluxes that are typically used include borax, boric acid, or a combination of the two. Alcohol. Preparing your crucible. Select either an unused crucible, or one that has only been used to melt refined gold. When using a fresh crucible, you must first flux it, sealing its pores, thus preventing it from absorbing gold. Heat your crucible to red hot. Sprinkle flux on the inside of the crucible. A mixture of 50% borax and 50% boric acid is the most commonly used flux. The flux will melt rapidly, forming a thin glaze and sealing the crucible's pores. Wrap your gold powder in jeweler's tissue paper. If that is not available, you can use a small section of a paper towel. Soak the wrapped gold powder in alcohol and place it in your crucible. The paper and alcohol will help secure the powder so that the air currents produced by the torch flame don't blow it away. Both paper and alcohol will burn away, leaving no trace. Melt your metal. When it flows like water, pour it into an ingot mold to make a bar of gold, or pour it into ice water to make shot. If you have any questions, regarding melting or any other part of the refining process, please feel free to contact Shaw. We will be happy to help you. Remember, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask.